Today's guest is a repeat guest. Her name is Sarah Banta. She is the owner of Accelerated Health Products and the host of Accelerated Health Radio and TV. Uh, So Sarah has an amazing story. She hit rock bottom about 15 years ago, suffering from Crohn's disease, hormonal issues, PCOS, and heavy metal toxicity. And when Western medicine couldn't give her her answer, she went on her own journey. And now she's doing all the incredible work that she's doing today. And she's coming back on today to talk about thyroid, hypothyroidism, thyroid issues, how the thyroid works what causes issues with it, all of the things you need to know and how that impacts your mood and your mental health. We also get into estrogen and problems with too much estrogen coming from our environment and a lot of factors um, and how that can impact your health. She is a like walking encyclopedia kind of person. So she's gonna hit a lot of things. So I encourage you if there's anything that just kind of pings off at you and you wanna look more into that, go to her website, it's Sarah Banta Health. Dot com. You can find her on Instagram also at, um, at accelerated health products, um, is her Instagram handle there. So we're about to get nerdy. You guys ready? Okay. Let's go ahead and start the show. This is Sarah Banta. Okay, Sarah, thank you for coming back on the show. We're going to talk about thyroid and mental health. Oh my gosh. So needed. It, oh. <laughs> how often, how much are you seeing thyroid issues? You know, I'm getting, I'm getting the chills as you ask me this question, because it literally is everybody. Unfortunately, within the last two years, because of the spike protein, because of the excess toxic overload, because of 5G, the smart meters, all of the radiation, it goes straight to the thyroid. And everyone's sitting there going, I'm depressed, I'm fatigued, it's because we've been isolated, it's because I'm not working, it's because my kids are anxious, all of these things. And then they go to the doctor and the doctor puts them on the anti-anxiety or anti mm-hmm. um, um, depressed, uh, depressants. Wow. And even my very best friends, I was at dinner with them and they're like, I just don't know what's going on. I'm gaining all this weight. My trainer doesn't understand it. And this is in your, your area where she's eating less than ever, which yeah, we, right. we know is not right, yeah. but she's drinking less than ever. She's cut out the processed foods, working out more, and she's putting on weight. Right. Telltale signs like thyroid. Yes. <laughs> and I said, okay, well, did they test your thyroid? Yeah. I said, did they test just your TSH? Yeah. Okay. Lesson 101. TSH is not a thyroid hormone. It's a pituitary hormone, (laughs) right? I like that. It's a signaling hormone. It signals the thyroid to do its job. And then what we have as an issue is all it does is it tells the thyroid to produce T4, which let's Let's pause there for one second. So for people who are unfamiliar, right? So TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, which I love that you're saying it's not a thyroid hormone. It's the stimulating hormone. I like that, right? And this comes from the, when we talk about thyroid, we talk a lot about the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal access, right? And like is in that line. But in terms of when you said, did they just test your TSH? Can you explain why you kind of knew that and what the state of testing and most of allopathic or Western medicine is like right now? Because that is what the doctors have been told. And if it is out of range and number one on a blood test, that range is the range of the normal or median of the regular population, which is not a healthy population. So that number might be skewed, whether you're going with Quest Labs or another facility, it's whatever's normal Mm -hmm. or or the average of that population. And just as we started out, most people have suboptimal thyroid. So you're not even getting a correct number. And then and well, and then, sorry, just, to, just for general knowledge, if the idea is like, well, if you're producing way, oh, way overproducing, if that's really high, then you probably have suboptimal thyroid function. And it's just like maddening because it's like, well, just test, you know, just, to, I get it. Maybe they're trying to save on lab tests. I don't know, but like, you've got to look deeper in your thyroid than just TSH. Right. Okay. So if the number is high, typically they say that the, the pituitary is screaming at your thyroid. Right to produce more T4 that it's not working. Right. 
And then the T4, which is tyrosine and four molecules of iodine, needs to be converted into T3 to be used. Mm -hmm. Okay, so T3, tyrosine and three molecules of iodine, but due to stress or a backed up liver, and tell me who is not stressed right now, the conversion may fail to occur, or worse yet, may convert into something called reverse T3, which is a stress response. And you're thinking, oh, well, it still has the T3 in the name, it must be good. No, when when free T3 is activated, so that's the good T3, Mm -hmm. Blood sugars released to be utilized efficiently, metabolism increases, energy increases mentally and physically. Okay, so reverse T3 is a stress response. It is a survival response. It's saying, hold the horses. We're being, we are being chased by a tiger. We're going to shut down production of metabolism. We're going to protect the body. We need to run. And we need to just slow down the metabolism. The adrenals release the stress hormones like cortisol and epinephrine. The HPT axis, which you had mentioned the HPA axis. So hypothalamus pituitary thyroid axis will start converting that T4 into reverse T3, slowing down the metabolism. And then the mood decreases. And then that can increase your stress even more, creating this vicious cycle. So if you are slowing down your metabolism, just think through this. You're stressed, you're slowing down the metabolism, you're running on on chronic cortisol as that stress response, which gives Mm -hmm. you energy initially, but Mm -hmm. after a while your adrenals start getting burned out Mm -hmm. and then you get fatigued and you have no gas in your tank. And you're fatigued, brain and body. And then that is going to increase that stress level even more because you're like, mm-hmm. I can't get out of this vicious cycle. Right. So the, and the lower T3 um, will actually has been related to stress related mental issues. So hypothyroidism, this is going to lead into hypothyroidism. Now, Mm -hmm. we haven't even started talking about the toxic overload, which I'll get into in a minute, but this excess chronic stress, which can inflame the brain and the gut, where the gut or where the mood transmitters are manufactured. I know you talk about GABA. That is one that I am big on. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually supplement with GABA at night and a lot of people do now because that GABA, that extra little GABA is not just helping the brain calm down, but it's actually helping fat burning and these, this chain reaction that has been affected by the spike protein. Um, and we can get into that in a minute too, if you, if you mm-hmm. want, but the T4 has, has to be the, the gut, the liver and the kidneys have to be healthy for the T4 to convert into T3, because that's where it happens. Most of it happens in the liver. So if the gut microbiome is off, if the liver is backed up with, by toxicity um, or if the kidneys aren't are functioning suboptimally, then low thyroid is going to occur even more. And I know Tara that you are really focused on um, emotions and stored in the body and in, in your emotional body and your physical body, your spiritual body. Well, the liver holds your your um, anger and frustration. Mm-hmm. Your kidneys hold fear. You tell me who is not in mm-hmm. fear over the last couple of years. So what happens there is we're holding on to all this fear in our kidneys, our kidneys become inflamed. Our kidneys are also inflamed because the adrenals sit on top of the kidneys. Mm -hmm. They're overproducing the stress hormones from the cortisol. So all of that's inflamed, causing water retention, causing just a backed up kidney function, um, holding on to that fear. And then you've got the liver holding on to your anger, onto your angst, onto your frustration, 
getting backed up with all of the excess estrogens that we can get into where estrogen dominance gets into um, uh, making this matter worse as far as the thyroid goes. Mm -hmm. And remember through all of this, the thyroid is the master endocrine gland. So it Mm -hmm. is taking over all of um, your gonadal systems, your female hormones, mm-hmm. your um, adrenals, that the pituitary, all of this is related to the thyroid. So right. back to the neurotransmitters, GABA, dopamine, serotonin, they're made in the gut. If the gut is compromised, it'll lead to mood disorders in addition to ineffective T4 to T3 conversion. Both issues are going to compound the low mood and depression. And then the liver is where most of that conversion happens. This is why I always talk to my clients about you got to love your liver on a daily basis Mm -hmm. and even more now than ever. And I can tell you that in my own family, what I'm experiencing, I mean, I I feed my, my kids and my husband as clean as possible. Wild animal protein, we, you know, very specific vegetables. We're very, very almost to a T, which can be a little um, overwhelming for a lot of people. However, what I'm seeing is hormonal disruption. Um, My menstrual cycles being more painful than before. Um, A lot more water retention during them. These are for my teenage girls. Mm -hmm. And if you guys don't think that you're not affected by hormones when you get older by females, it doesn't matter where my cycle is. I go through three cycles a month and it is, it's really interesting. Yeah. But what I what we've noticed is through the increase of the toxicity that we've been exposed to, regardless Mm -hmm. of what you're doing, the symptoms have been exaggerated. And then what happens is during that menstrual cycle, thyroid can slow down, right? Because it's very common for the body to then focus on getting um, things moving during Mm -hmm. that cycle. And you've got constipation, low motility, just feeling icky, and the thyroid slows down at the same time. So if you're experiencing some of those issues during a cycle, and you're also getting moody, it's all related. So that's just one example of how things have even gotten more escalated, where we really have to take care of our health nowadays, Mm -hmm. because we are being bombarded by these toxins and things that are slowing down our thyroid, increasing our stress, putting more um, pressure on our liver and our kidneys. So, yeah, just real quick interjection. I mean, I know men that this is happening to men too, but any health professional, any nutritionist, anyone doing holistic health, what anything we are just seeing thyroid issues. Like it, it's like literally, it feels like almost everyone who comes to me, you know what I mean? It's extremely common. It's like at least half of my clients at a time come to me with thyroid issues. Well, you know? uh, and then they're, they're wanting to come to you to lose weight and get strong. Right. That's and, what I was going to say. It's like, they, they do it. They're doing the work you tell them to do and they're not getting results. And it's not their fault. It's not a lack of willpower. I hate when people say it's a, it's a lack of willpower. Well, the Um, education piece that I have to give them is sure. Can we starve you to damn death? Uh Uh-huh. Is that going to take you the opposite direction of where you want to go? Uh-huh. So we have to basically the way I look at it in a really broad, you know, pull zoom out is like, look how many women are having issues. We know that women, female bodies are much more complicated and intricate than male bodies. There's a lot going on. Women need nurturing, nurture. We have to nurture that delicate, complicated system with so many nutrients. I mean, when I think thyroid, I think, uh, you know, amino acids, magnesium, B12, zinc, iodine, vitamin C, um, selenium, you know, and 
look at our food system, look at our food web. Like, even if you're eating healthy, we just do not have the nutrient density in our food. If you don't know this yet, just know this. You can Google it yourself. We do not, I don't care what you're eating. I don't care how, I just had like spiralized beets and butternut squash noodles with, you know, organic chicken and goat cheese and, you know, really healthy I full well know that those beets and the, that butternut squash did not have near the vitamin and mineral content in it that it did 50 years ago. Exactly. So that is why I supplement like this is something. And then on top of it, think if you have a really delicate system and it gets stressed, what do you think is going to get affected more? A delicate system or a more simple <laughs> system. Sorry guys, but it's how it is. No, absolutely. And my (laughs) my daughter actually, so my two daughters are rowers. They row for Mm, competition and, um, they just had a big like competition within the team and, and all of that stuff. And my one daughter came home last night actually. And she goes, mom, isn't it true that women and their hormones affect their workouts and their performance a lot more than men? And I started laughing. I said, (laughs) Yes, Yes. absolutely. She goes, well, how do we tell our 23 year old male coach that? Mm. And and because the guys progress a lot quicker and, you know, are you testing a girl at the same point of her cycle as her competition? Right. right? And, and it's, it's like follicular like, oh. phase, please. I only <laughs> want to be tested on my follicular, follicular, the first part. <laughs> yes. And you mentioned men, my husband, 53 years old, he had an amazing digestion. We always um, laugh that we are salt and pepper. But in Ayurvedic medicine, we call me water double because I'm double water. So I retain water. Um, That is my natural composition. And his is double fire. So he Mm -hmm. never had any issues with digestion. Mm -hmm. Thyroid is always amazing. Never had constipation issues. Okay, we're 53 now. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, age Mm -hmm. and the toxicity and estrogen dominance is impacting him. Mm -hmm. And now, all of a sudden, I'm looking pretty smart because he's wanting to know how to (laughs) reverse it and increase testosterone and get his male hormones back. So, my Mm -hmm. point is, it is affecting men. They're getting the man boobs, they're not holding on to that muscle. the definition that they used to, it doesn't matter what they're doing. So this is global. And the other thing that we, we want to address is that it, the HPA access, the HPT access also affects the HPG axis, the, the hypothalamus pituitary gonadal hormones, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. So if your hormones are out of whack, you might not be producing or converting the T4 to T3 or vice versa. If estrogen goes down, um, thyroid hormones may go down. Or if your testosterone goes down, your thyroid hormones go down. And us women, we need more testosterone than our other hormones. It's a misnomer that we don't have testosterone. We just don't have as much as men. And we are never going to be big and huge. I, I, Tara looks beautiful with all of her beautiful muscle on her. I wish I could build that. And I lift heavy, heavy weights to try to do it. And it doesn't, you know, I'm not going to, unless I start injecting myself. Different with, genetics. Yes. Right? <laughs> but, but anyways, it, it, so your thyroid hormones are going to be impacted by your sex hormones and vice versa. So this change can be contributed to can contribute to symptoms of anxiety, irritability, in addition to being misdiagnosed as signs of age, just age. Oh, you're just getting old. That's what that's what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to be tired. You're supposed to have brain fog. um, But also hypothyroidism can be misdiagnosed as PCOS. I was PCOS. I couldn't get pregnant on my own. Um, First pregnancy was on a whim. It literally was like God gave me a baby. And I, you know, I think it was also because it was New Year's Eve and um, the cold (laughs) winter helped with my blood sugar because no doctor told me that PCOS was related to thyroid or insulin resistance. Wow. 
And as soon as I corrected my insulin resistance and my thyroid, yeah. bam, my cycle was normal. PCOS went away. Yeah. And PCOS is the number one um, cause of infertility for women. So you women out there, look this up. And I've got a protocol on how to reverse nice. both the insulin resistance and improve your thyroid. Yeah. Um, really important. So that just shows you how important the thyroid is for, for the, um, the gonadal system. Yeah. And if you, you know, if you are diagnosed by your doctor with depression or anxiety, and you've been put on medication and it's not working time to find a new doctor, 30 to 50% of people are not getting a response from their antidepressants. And no amount of antidepressant is going to upregulate the thyroid, which is the root of the problem. Mm -hmm. So, well, it's crazy to me that most of the antidepressants are being written by general practitioners who have no background in, in any of any of the, sorry, but any of the stuff you just talked about, like any of the, those holistic systems of like how things are functioning or psychology. And it's like, to me, it's wrong. <laughs> it's, it, they don't know what else to do. And I'll just leave it at that. And so it's like, go find somebody who is going a little deeper than just, oh, you're sad. Here's a pill. You know, I'm not, I'm not anti pharma. I'm just anti over prescription of pharma. That's blanketing stuff that needs to actually be addressed, you know? So yeah. I kind of want to go into toxicity with you because this is an area that you are way deeper into than I am. So in terms of the thyroid and toxicity, what do people need to know? Okay, so this is um, so important for um, imperative for everyone to know in the last two years because of what's gone on. While we're looking over here at the news, they're jacking up the 5G towers. And I don't care if you're living in Los Angeles or you're, you're in a, a rural town in Idaho. The 5G towers are up. They are being hidden by the palm trees. And the, I mean, I don't, it's amazing. And Terry, you're in Utah. My son's in Utah and he's skiing today, actually. Um, so they're getting a lot, you guys are getting a lot more fresh air and maybe a little break from it. But you tell me which kid or adult is not holding on to their cell phone like their third appendage, right? Mm -hmm. So the thyroid is the master endocrine gland producing mental and physical energy. Most people have a suboptimal thyroid function due to the iodine deficiency, as you mentioned, from the lack of diet and lack of converting from the inactive to the active hormones. But what's going on is if we don't have enough iodine in our in our body to fill those cells, the heavy metals like fluoride, chloride, or chlorine, bromide, and radiation from all of these smart devices and things are going to fill those receptor sites and take over. Because let's go back to our, our chemistry class in high school. They are all part of the halogen family, iodine, um, chloride, fluoride, bromide, they're all in the same category. So the body just takes in those toxins as if it's iodine because there's not enough iodine. Then we had the serious exposure from Chernobyl and Fukushima. Those nuclear explosions were having threats of, of nuclear explosions now globally. Um, you think about the, the threats that we have going on there's a lot of minor ones that we're not hearing about over here that are happening. So we are being exposed to more radiation than ever. Then we've got our medical procedures and the chemtrails and the spike protein. All of these things are forcing iodine out of the system. To make matters worse, it's not in our diet. And when you do eat your kelp or your seaweed or your fish that supposedly is has the iodine or your iodized salt, it's coming from toxic sources. Mm -hmm. So you're here trying to take the right iodine supplement. And most iodine supplements only have 10 to 20% absorption or you're taking in the food. And then you're actually taking in the heavy metals and radiation that are displacing the proper iodine in the first place. 
And then radiation and toxicity in general are linked to depression, anxiety, and all mental health disorders. So, so away from the iodine issue, you've got this cell phone up to your head where your brain is a certain brain wave, right? It's a certain frequency. This phone, that frequency is much faster. So then our brains are trying to keep up with it and it can't. Well, just thinking about this just causes me anxiety, <laughs> and right? And just that it freaks out the brain in general. And so you've got people addicted to their phones. They're addicted to pornography, gambling, food, alcohol, all these things. And then you've got that dopamine issue of trying to um, keep our dopamine level high but we're all addicted to something to cope with the stress. And then that adds on another layer. Mm -hmm. So with the, um, with the spike protein also, we are seeing this extreme fatigue, um, depression, brain fog. We're seeing gut issues. We're seeing a lot of chronic diseases actually go quicker and, um, you know, insulin resistance, all of the frequencies and from the EMFs are actually causing more, um, um, blood sugar issues, even from not eating anything. So could you be gaining weight without eating that brownie? Yeah, you could from the excess cortisol and epinephrine that are being released to take care of the stress. And then that's a vicious cycle. And this is something called thyro stress, where you feel like you can't even get out of this cycle of being hypothyroid, having this unexplained weight gain, feeling depressed, having brain fog, blurred vision, blood sugars going up, doctors just telling you to go work out more and eat less. There's no, no answers. And then you've, you've lowered your dopamine levels, which is our drive or a motivation hormone. And dopamine is positively correlated with T3 levels. So if your dopamine's going down, then your T3 level might be going down or vice versa. Um, so it's all related. And that's where the supplements and the proper diet and also community you know, and coaching really come in because, you know, people like you, Tara, are so inspiring and make you feel not alone that you and I are going through this. I mean, I'm feeling the changes in my body. And at the age of 47, yes, I am on top of my health. And yes, I feel better than I did in my 20s. And even my teenage years, when I had hit my rock bottom. And also, you know, I was I was bloated, I had fatigue, I had my hair falling out, I had acne, I then had to fast forward into when my son was diagnosed with leukemia, but pain to purpose, right? Mm -hmm. And the way I look at what's going on right now is I see in my own family it affecting us. And it's affecting a 53-year-old male, it's affecting an 18-year-old teenage athlete girl. It's a fact affecting me at 47, a woman. And I have, I'm a great N of one because I'm so consistent almost to a fault. Right. Yeah. And I don't really go off the rails. So if I feel something or, or something's going on, I always say, okay, what am I going to do with this? What am I learning with this so that I can share with the world? And yeah. a lot of it comes back to the thyroid. Mm, yeah. So many things come to mind as you describe all that. One is a push for testing, right? A hair mineral analysis. I'm a huge fan of because I, you know, with iodine specifically, you could possibly have too much iodine, you know, Alan Christensen is really big on that. Um, and so it's good to, with all minerals, it's like, you don't want to overdo it. So let's the reason I think that's such a slam dunk, you'll find about your selenium, you'll find about your magnesium and zinc and all of these things that are important for thyroid. And you'll find out if you have heavy metals, which a lot of people do, and you are not going to know if you have heavy metals, unless you test, <laughs> you know? And so a push for that. And then also just, as I hear you say all that, I'm, it's just, all I can think is like how important it is for us to de-stress because 
thy- hypothyroidism is just the quintessential example of an overstressed system. And it's like, okay, so what is creating the overstress? Is it extreme dieting? Is it life stress? Is it over exercising? Is it a lack of certain vitamins and minerals that's overstressing the system? Is it just being go, go, go all the time and never having rest, not having community, not having friends, the stress of loneliness or whatever. It's just, it is an overstressed system. And all of the things that you said are so important to know. And like, go, if you have, you've got to have a place you, there's got to be nature near you somewhere. And like literally just going out and laying with your hands behind your head and crossing your legs and just looking at the sky for a few minutes. I mean, does wonders and you know yeah. anyone can do that but just being in i i'd say for me like the people who know me well are surprised how much time i spend in silence and doing nothing and just moseying around my house and being in calm like i have a lot of boundaries around that so that i can go crush it in the gym in the morning crush out some podcasts and client calls blah, blah, blah. but by two o'clock i'm like i'm done that's it I, yeah. that's all i got that's it and i will not drive myself into the ground because we have both learned where that takes you and it's not a fun place. No, you, know? you, you and I are very alike in that. I mean, my downtime, you don't touch me. You don't talk to me and uh, my kids know it. My husband knows it. Yeah. I need to be rejuvenated. And I worked out really hard. I was an athlete in high school and I just took that, uh, you know, along my life. But as the hormones change, perimenopause, menopause, us women can't their chronic cardio kills you it will backfire it will lower your thyroid it will lower your metabolism even in my 20s it did that exactly in the 20s it was no go it was not good it was not beneficial i mean i ran some marathons and that was a cool achievement but in terms of overall health it made everything harder (laughs) yeah and i i wanted to touch on the iodine um yeah so there's a lot of mis information about iodine. I love the word misinformation right now. <laughs> <laughs> Not triggering at all. <laughs> and, uh, but when you are taste, so I have an acceleridine iodine, which is a hundred percent absorbed by not just the thyroid, but all 100 trillion cells in the body, including the brain. And a lot of people think you can overdo iodine. And usually someone has an adverse reaction to iodine. If they're taking a toxic iodine or one that is um, attached to another molecule. So it's a diatomic iodine. If you already have hypothyroidism and your cells don't have much energy, then it has to work hard to break apart that that supplement to use that iodine. Well, with the 100% absorption of the monoatomic iodine, it's detoxing the brain and the thyroid and all 100 trillion cells in the body of the radiation, the heavy metals that cause brain fog, depression, and anxiety. And what happens on a blood test, and I go into this on my website, sarahbantahealth.com, is that um, the blood test may show TSH go through the roof for six months. Why? Because all of a sudden, the pituitary wakes up and says, oh my gosh, she's giving me all this amazing iodine. Let's scream at the thyroid to get more for all 100 trillion cells. And then we have, when we have sufficient iodine in the whole body, we're going to regulate our iodine levels. And what people right. will come to me, I'll say, Sarah, my doctor's freaking out because my TSH is off the charts. And I said, well, how do you feel? I feel better than ever. I feel like my hypothyroidism is reversing. So that I have in combination with the new accelerated thyroid, which is a combination of an Ayurvedic herb called Conchonara. I've been taking it for years, but as you know, Tara, during the last couple of years, a lot of supplement companies have downgraded their quality of ingredients because prices have gone up. We are sticking to the highest quality of Conchonara at the master herbalist formula. Um, and then we, we uh, have in it also freeze dried glandular. So 
it essentially is healing the thyroid because then what we do with both the accelerodyne iodine and the accelerated thyroid, we enhance them with scalar frequencies to increase their efficacy, to detox the body of the heavy metals, of the, the radiation. So we're actually neutralizing nuclear fallout and radiation with these two supplements and then healing the general health of the thyroid. So you ask me, well, who can, you know, the doctor says, I don't have any thyroid issues. If you're one of the few people out there that doesn't, can I benefit from accelerated thyroid and accelerodyne? Yes, because they're healing the thyroid and they're detoxing you from the, um, the radiation and the heavy metals. So with that, I really would love to direct people to the articles on my website, discussing, discussing the, yeah. the studies that have been done and where the misinformation has come from. Um, there was one study that was misread in a, in a com compilation of a whole bunch of other studies that showed it, it was helping with, I mean, at high, high levels of iodine these people were being healed and there was not an adverse reaction. So there is some studies to def. I recommend people go do their own research. And, um, but in general, I always, I always tell people like you do, you are your, your best doctor. How do you feel? Yes. Right. Test, but also how mm -hmm. do you feel? And are you getting the results? Are you going to the gym and eating what the doctor tells you and getting your results? Well, then you're fine. If you're eating um, these certain vegetables and you feel fine, great. If you're eating cabbage and kale and a low calorie ketogenic diet and you're bloated and look like you're nine months pregnant, like I did three years ago, then maybe something's wrong. Right. Maybe those vegetables don't agree with you until you right. heal your gut get your thyroid and your hormones working, and then maybe you can reintroduce them again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cruciferous vegetables and thyroid hypothyroidism don't play too nice together for <laughs> many, anyone I've ever come across. <laughs> right. So, okay. Wow. Um, yeah. And so on, in terms of the research on that, go to your Sarah website. Ban yeah. My, my website, sarabantahealth.com under the articles or under the podcast, I've just search okay. iodine and you'll see okay. like four or five different articles about iodine. You can, it's more information than you want, but a lot of people ask about like, should my kids be taking it? Yes. So one thing that iodine does away from the thyroid is it, it triggers apoptosis. And we always talk about autophagy and apoptosis with um, intermittent fasting, that's cellular turnover. And well, apoptosis is the destruction of the diseased and damaged and cancer cells. Well, it's also really heavily occurring during pregnancy and puberty. That's when the body is growing the most, right? Our teenagers need it. Our, yeah. our, our daughters, when they're going through their teen years and, mm -hmm. and they're going through all these hormonal changes, my goodness, they are going through the changes. Believe me. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's when they need the most iodine because mm -hmm. iodine triggers apoptosis and iodine increases ATP production at the cellular level by 18 times wow. more than a regular cell. So if you're saying, I just can't even get that energy from my coffee and I need the coffee at, yeah. at three yeah. in the afternoon, that's a sign your adrenals are burnt out, but your ATP production is low. And our energy comes from hydration, cellular hydration, and ATP. Mm -hmm. Iodine is the only supplement that actually hydrates the cells without drinking water. So mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. And then mm -hmm. the other amazing thing about iodine, it's been known for thousands of years to be the number one spiritual element. So it opens up the pineal gland and, and connects you with your higher self. I remember my niece, um, she was in high school at the time and she, her mom wanted her to take the iodine for her immune system because it also is known to be an antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal, antiparasitic, mm -hmm. um, you name it. it, it does it. And she started taking it and she goes, 
all of a sudden, I just feel like my brain's awake. What just happened? And I said, it's the iodine. It's opening you up. And you literally are connecting yourself from your your spiritual higher self to your body, the brain and your body. And if you think about it, the thyroid is the bridge from the brain to the body. So it is the connection to your spiritual higher self. And a lot of people start taking it will say, it's really weird. I'm getting rid of all the toxic people in my life and my friendships are changing Mm -hmm. and all of this turnover. Well, you're getting cellular turnover and you're getting spiritual turnover, emotional turnover. It's also helping get rid of all those foreign pathogens that are in our body, the parasites, the the viruses, the bacteria, the fungus. Um, I use it with uh, the accelerated castor oil, which is enhanced with scalar frequencies. Mix that with the I, the Acceleridine. I put it on my face as a face mask um, at night to help penetrate, get rid of any skin aging spots, even acne. Um, it's a great mask. Or what you can also do is actually rub it into a scar. Say you have a scar on your body, maybe from um, falling down when you were in your teenage years or what what have you. When you rub it in, so so take you a, taking a scar, scars are where parasites love to hide. So mm-hmm. you put the, the iodine and the castor oil, you rub it in with a tool and you will actually break up that scar tissue and expel the, the parasites and then also start getting rid of that scar tissue. It's really fascinating for, oh. for, to, for something to try. Interesting. I'm, I'm excited to look through what you've got on thyroid. So I'll, I'll check that out as well. And I wanted to switch over a little bit into estrogen, right? So, I mean, you probably know Anthony J. He wrote Estrogeneration. You know, there's a lot of health professional professionals out there talking about, okay, what is going, why do we have such an estrogen dominant uh, world that we're in now? So let's, let's talk about that. And then also if you could talk about how that will impact like uh, how a woman feels their, you know, their mental state and all of that, not to mention yeah. all of the health consequences and body fat storage and all of that. Yeah. I mean, a lot of women, I don't have to tell you all of a sudden in their forties and fifties are like, huh, I can't get away with what I used to get away with. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I would go on a trip and have a cheat week, you know, on spring break and come home, put myself on the diet and would fall right off. And now it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, some of the things we were just talking about, also lead to estrogen dominance, a dirty liver. So the liver is responsible for producing the estrogen binding protein. And when the liver's dirty, it has a difficult time doing this. And then the liver is also where phase one, two, and three estrogen detoxification occurs. So we're not just talking about this imbalance of the estrogen we produce, but we're talking about the tap water um, full of birth control um, and hormone replacement therapy that's not cleared out of that tap water that we're all consuming, even the men in our lives. And the sugar, eating refined sugar, not only robs you of the important minerals, it also produces excess estrogen in the body. And while the white sugar is consumed, the minerals are taken out from the body in order to digest. And so it's also pulling out the calcium, the chromium, the mag- manganese, the cobalt, the copper, zinc, and, and magnesium. So it's not just like a Oh, well, it's, I'm not eating any nutrients right now with my Ben and Jerry's. It's actually stealing away the nutrients that you did eat with that healthy meal. Then you add in the conventional meat, poultry, and dairy. 90% of the livestock in the United States have estrogen implants behind their ears to make them come to um, livestock faster and fatter right? So that we can, so that we can eat them faster and increase profit. That is going to increase estrogen in them and then in us. And then you've got the pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides. Those all increase estrogens, improper food combining. My kids hated me when I said this, because they, of course, whenever I research a topic, I'll say at the dinner table, did you know, Mm -hmm. um, when you 
have the wrong foods in your stomach at the same time, it actually causes acute metabolic acidosis leading to increased estrogen. So fruit always all by itself, protein with vegetables is okay. Starches with vegetables are okay, but never protein with starches, not your steak and potatoes, your turkey on your bread, uh, fish with rice, chicken with pasta, that will increase estrogen. Now, if you're a fully functioning 18 year old boy and you need 4,000 calories and you're not seeing any signs of estrogen dominance. I'm not telling you to not eat your potatoes with your with your um, with your steak, but just something to keep in the back of your mind to, you know, oh, gosh, that's what I do. Maybe I should stop doing that and try to separate them out. Overeating, too much eating in, in the stomach strangulates the internal lining of the stomach, preve- preventing um, some of the hydrochloric acid to be secreted and then causing the acute metabolic acidosis as well. Plastics, parabens, um, birth control in general, inflammation and oxidative stress, these are all going to increase estrogen in the body. Soy, unfortunately, soy is estrogenic and all soy is, is GMO and mimics estrogen in the body, leading to estrogen dominance, consuming GMO and grains, um, they're, they're inflammatory. The grains not only have, they're not only infl- inflammatory, but a lot of them have mold. And if you are prone to allergies, then that's a problem. If you have an issue with lectins, they've got lectins. If you have an issue with sulfur or oxalates, which I go into in my, um, my teachings, of different foods that have sulfur and oxalates and lectins and what to look out for. And like I said, and like Tara talks, you talk about it, it's all individual and you have to kind of see what triggers you, but mm-hmm. these could all be causing a, a, a causing aromatization, converting the testosterone in your body into estrogen. So if you are get your blood test, and my husband just went through this, his testosterone is 800. It's great, Mm -hmm. right? But what's his free testosterone? Mm -hmm. It's low. And Mm -hmm. we had to start looking at it because um, some of the uh, the aromatization of the testosterone Mm -hmm. into estrogen. So make sure when you get your blood test, you want to test for that free T um, testosterone, not just the total testosterone stress. Like we talked about before for the thyroid, it also causes estrogen dominance, um, and then leaky gut. So leaky gut is going to affect your thyroid, affect your, your neurotransmitters, but it's also going to compromise your estrobolone, which is the estrogen detoxifying microbiome. In other words, it helps, um, with detoxing the gut, of the estrogens. And if you have leaky gut, then your body's just going to recycle the estrogens and not um, effectively get them out. And then the thing that can backfire, there are supplements out there to help with estrogen dominance. Number one, DIM. DIM is full of the vegetables, including broccoli, cauliflower, bok choy, cabbage, kale. They're all anti-estrogenic, but If you have a problem with your sulfur detoxification, so not just your Mm -hmm. thyroid, but your body, your liver can't detox the sulfur. And what we're seeing is this is becoming everybody with the spike protein, whether you Mm -hmm. got the, the jab or not, whether you've had COVID or not, the spike protein has, has infiltrated all of us, unfortunately. And as a result, our sulfur detox pathways have been um, compromised. So the DIM is actually going to backfire and back up the liver. And it's funny because even with my husband, one of his practitioners, a holistic practitioner, put him on DIM to help with the estrogens. And I said, you shouldn't take that. And he goes, I'm going to go with their program for one month. I said, okay. So two days in, massive headaches. Mm. And I said, 
hmm, your wife kind of knows something, huh? <laughs> and so he stopped with that. But there are other supplements that you can take, mm-hmm. like calcium deglucurate, where mm-hmm. you're binding up the estrogen in the gut instead yes. of in the, um, the liver. And glutathione, glutathione's great as an as a antioxidant helping with liver detoxification, but it's sulfur based. So same Mm -hmm. issue. And then you've got mushrooms. Mushrooms are used for estrogen detoxification. But if you have a sensitivity to mold, the mushrooms could backfire too, causing inflammation, causing a liver backup and allergies. So iodine is, again, helps with estrogen um, dominance because it regulates estrogen in the body, cleans the blood so the liver can detox the estrogen properly. And it detoxes the estrogen in the receptor cells to help reverse estrogen dominance. It also helps with fibroids, PCOS, and all the hormonal balances. Um, Funny enough, my one daughter has really painful periods. And um, I just told her, I said, if you're, if I'm going to pay for all this testing to see what's going on, and pay for all these supplements, you've got to do your part. Mm -hmm. And you've got to take your iodine. And so Mm -hmm. we we, I wrote down and I said, Are you are you going to do your part? Because I'm not willing to pay for all this good food and all the supplements and all these appointments if you're not going to do your part. Mm -hmm. And the iodine is number one. Mm -hmm. Um, Then just being in a low, low carb, high wild animal protein, diet, I really push the wild animal protein because Mm -hmm. it has all the really great nutrients that we're not Mm -hmm. getting from our vegetables Mm -hmm. anymore. And it tastes so good, right? Mm -hmm. Um, There's, there's an issue with the spike protein now triggering more amyloids in our bodies. And the amyloid proteins are also in the conventional beef, chicken, poultry, which Yes, we used to be able to eat it fine, but now you might not be able to handle chicken, turkey, pork, and conventional beef because it puts an extra amyloid burden on your body. And those amyloids go to the brain, causing dementia and Alzheimer's. They actually trip up the gut pathogens like E. coli and salmonella or SIBO in the gut, where Maybe the chicken didn't have E. coli in it, but the amyloid proteins cause a disruption in the gut, can't get digested, digested. Mm -hmm. then the E. coli in the gut overtake the good bacteria and dysregulates the, this nice, um, nice, beautiful um, ecosystem that that was in balance, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where I I really advocate the wild bison, lamb, Mm -hmm. wild fish. And people will ask me, well, what the prices, Sarah, it's more expensive. Nowadays, you can go to butcherbox.com, northstarbison.com. Look up Google the, mm-hmm. the, the, these delivery systems where I've got in my freezer, a whole bunch of wild animal protein. So that if my kid wants something for dinner and I want something different, I throw it all on the barbecue. It's just as easy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's all wild and you can get the ground versions. You can get the sausages. You can get the breakfast bacon versions of, of the other meats where it all tastes good. It's not overpriced. It's coming straight from the from the farm to you, cutting mm-hmm. out the middleman. So mm-hmm. it's saving money, and there's a way to do it. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, nowadays with all that's going on, we have to make these changes. Yeah. Right. If we want to keep our families healthy and well. Well, I remember recently hearing somebody talk about how much money they spend on food between eating out and and groceries, and I was like, oh my gosh! I mean, I was mind blown. I was like. I have four kids and I definitely spend way less of my monthly budget on that on food. And I eat regenerative. I, you know, order stuff like that. I eat the highest quality food I can. And if you will make those shifts in your lifestyle, like you just demonstrated with the grill thing, like stuff like that, 
and you, you can eat the highest quality food you can get your hands on. I'm telling you, you can do it if you're, cause like when I go to like, let's say, you know, I'm just, it's a Saturday, I'm going to like the habit or something, you know, it's definitely not regenerative. It's definitely not like the high quality thing, but I am all, I've got my kids, you know, we're out hiking or something. Maybe we'll stop by. I'm like, this was like 60 or $70. Yeah. Do you know how much high, and, and we're done. That's it. It's just this one meal that was low. Qual- I mean, I'm, no offense to the habit, but it's not like the stuff yeah. we eat, you know? And I'm like, we had this one meal, 70 bucks. You know how much good meat I could get for $70? Like so Mm. much. It makes so many meals out of it. So I'm telling you, if you don't believe me, like try it, start making those shifts because I actually think it. if you're not, when you eat like that too, your taste change and you don't want, I don't like the habit. I don't like eating out. It's not as good to me as the food that I make at home, you know? And so it is a lifestyle shift, but I actually think it's more cost-effective in the long run. And then you start looking at like, you know, there's no middleman in the global footprint impact. It's, it's, it's better. And I think it is affordable or accessible for a lot more people than, than people think. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll just emphasize one thing. I love college and, and Tara, I believe your kids are younger than mine. So my son is the first to go off to college. He he's a sophomore this year, but last year he's at Utah And he's used to all of my good cooking and my wild meats Mm -hmm. at home. Mm -hmm. And I've got my daughters that are, you know, they're picky eaters and all of that, but Mm -hmm. they don't know any different because they've only had me as their mom and feeding them the way I'm feeding them. So my son goes off to college and he was going to be eating the dorm food and all of that. Day three, he calls me and he goes, mom, I can't, I can't do it. He goes, I I said, Oh, what's going on? He goes, it's not that the, it's not that I didn't want the pizza and what they're serving in the dorm food. Mm -hmm. It doesn't taste good. Right. And I feel like crap Right. within three days. So that poor freshman in the dorm had started taking his one pan and delivery got the meat delivered to his dorm had a freezer in his dorm (laughs) oh my gosh and he would go out and cook these meals and smell up the whole dorm floor wow um but for him he did it and now he's able to do a lot more cooking because he's in a um an apartment but he he's like yeah i'm never going back and he he figured it out with his friends. Cause there's a lot of socialization at the, you know, going yeah. to the dorm food, the cafeteria and all of that. Yeah. And there's a workarounds to it. Yeah. Um, and we laugh at the fact that my youngest is the most picky. And I go, Oh, you just wait until you go off to college. I can't wait for you to come back and appreciate what I've provided. So yeah, 100%. It's, um, yeah. It does get to that point. It gets to that point where it's, it's not like, I don't know. You completely stop. It's like going to some fast food place, like literally just starts to sound disgusting. It's like that. I, it's not, I'm not even like quote unquote, trying to be healthy. That just like sounds so gross to me, you know? And it does get to that point when you get used to what quality food actually tastes like things change, you know, those beet and butternut squash noodles that I fried up and some avocado oil and just some salt. I didn't want anything else on it. I wanted yeah. to taste them because they taste good, you know, and you get right. used to that the more you do it. Okay. Kind of recapping the episode. Like there were so many things that I'm sure people heard, like, wait, what did she say about like estrogen in the liver? Or what did she say about thyroid and then dopamine? And the- so how do people learn more if they heard a snippet of something that they want to dive more into. Yeah. Cause I, whenever I'm talking to anybody, I always say, don't, you don't have to remember anything I said, right. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to take notes. Everything is on my website, sarahbantahealth.com. I do daily coaching free on telegram where I post um, videos and articles and troubleshoot as much as I can. Awesome. People ask me their questions And I respond probably too quickly. Um, I need to have some boundaries, (laughs) but I do respond to all the questions on the telegram and you learn from each other just from the, you know, we're all isolated. We all have this feeling as I would say, Tara, everyone I'm speaking to 
has some level of depression or anxiety um, and, or has a child or, and I can't tell you how many parents are reaching out to me with a child that Mm -hmm. is suicidal right now. It is, Mm -hmm. it is rampant. So Mm -hmm. you are not alone. Mm -hmm. And I really have a passion for helping get you out of that. Mm -hmm. Um, There's so many articles and podcasts and then my coaching. So join the coaching and just comb through um, my articles, search your topic, you will find it. And we are just adding so much more. I now have just to add on to the topic of mental health, we just released Cognoblast, Mm -hmm. which is a mood enhancer, focused, Mm -hmm. smart drug, helps prevent Alzheimer's and dementia. So it's going to help the kid with ADHD and depression Mm -hmm all the way to the 80 year old that is, has Alzheimer's, but I am so passionate about all of this, um, and helping turn over, you know, your health to make you feel your, your most optimal in body, mind, and spirit. Yeah. So sarahbantahealth.com and I'm sure you have links to your show, accelerated health TV and radio, which I've been on a few times. So check that out. Make sure you guys know that she has an amazing show that she hosts. Um, and then all of your products that are just super cool. If you're health geeky, you are going to nerd out hard and be like, wait, what did she put in this? What did she do? There's freaking scalar ways. Wait, what? So really fun to peruse through all of that. And then again, everything that you said that you can find her coaching community, tell it the telegram link is on there as well. Yeah. Cool. All right. So that's where you guys go is sarahbantahealth.com. And then on Instagram, your accelerated health products. Products. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you, Tara.